This is the Spikes Tactical Brown Recluse. This is an integrally suppressed 9mm carbine made by Spikes Tactical. This thing is badass and it's coming up right now on the VSO Gun Channel. So first off, we want to say special thanks to Silencer Shop for getting this thing out to us. This is probably one of the first reviews that you're going to see on this particular gun because, well, Silencer Shop is pretty much the only place that you can get one of these things right now. As I mentioned, this is an integrally suppressed 9mm carbine from Spikes Tactical. The can is pin and welded to the barrel, so this makes up a one stamp gun. This is a legal length gun. Uh, however, it is a one stamp gun because it is suppressed. The barrel that is underneath of the can is actually ported so that if you're shooting supersonic ammunition, it will drop that velocity, it will bleed off some of that gas so that the round will reduce to subsonic velocities. Obviously, if you're shooting really hot ammo, you can still exceed the sound barrier on these things. We're actually going to test that here in a minute, see what we can get away with as far as velocities on this particular gun. Like standard, most 9mm guns, this is a direct blowback operated gun. Needs no gas system up in here, allows us to put this big honk can on underneath here. It is a fully user serviceable can. You access the can here at the front and the baffles basically pour out like a standard baffle stack. Obviously Magpul furniture on this thing, a dedicated lower receiver that has been milled out to accept Colt magazines and some of you are going to say, whoa, what does it shoot Glock magazines? Well, because Colt magazine is actually far superior. This uh, magazine was designed to feed into an open bolt machine gun, not a semi-automatic pistol. Also, the Colt magazine comes to double stack, a Glock magazine comes to single stack at its very top. This is a far more reliable magazine design, however, they are harder to load. As far as other features are concerned here, we have ambidextrous fire control, although this one does not have fun lever on it. Safe fire, works with both hand. Standard charging handle, looks like we have some generation two EMBA sights on here. And as far as the rail is concerned, signature spikes rail on here with cheese grater all the way up with weight relief cuts, of course, but we have a full quad rail all the way around. The Rail is not monolithic, however, it comes very close to being monolithic. Very, very slight gap right here, but you will be able to mount any optics across there that you so desire. The magazine release is a little bit of an upgraded magazine release. Uh, it's got some extra checkering on here for some grippage. Looks pretty nice. And the ejection port has been cut down. So one of the things that kind of sucks about a 9mm carbine, if you guys don't know, is go ahead and break this thing open here. You have to have a stop for the Colt magazine. And if this was Glock mag, you'd have to have the same thing. But that keeps you from over inserting the magazine. Locks in right here. However, if you've got extra space in here, you can see that there's a lot of fouling that comes back into the gun, as well as, if I can pull the guts out here, you can see that the bolt carrier group for a nine millimeter is missing some space here in that it does not have the bolt face up front here that you would normally have. It leaves some dead space in here and that allows casings to fall back down inside. You can see here, Spikes has fixed that by shrinking the ejection port, leaving, uh, closing this space up with this buffer here so that those casings cannot hit the shell deflector and end up back inside. Poor extraction on 9mm carbines is a killer. It can get down inside of your components here and lock you up. You have to disassemble the gun, com 
completely, sometimes not the funnest way to do it either, and you've got problems. They have solved these issues in the brown recluse by filling in that space. I think this is gonna lend itself to be a much more reliable carbine, and what we're gonna go ahead and do right now is go ahead and load this sucker up, burn up some ammo. Like a boss. <laughs> Brown recluse, and I've got five rounds of nine millimeter hush from free munitions in here. This stuff is some premium subsonic ammunition. Should be moving pretty slow through here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot this first, then we're gonna swap over to some supersonic stuff, see how that ported barrel is draw dragging the velocities down. Six ninety seven. Seven fifteen. Seven forty one. Seven thirty nine. Seven nineteen. All right, I'm go ahead and load it up. See how it looks. All right, guys. So now I have some prime 124 grain, just standard ball ammo. This is not supersonic ammo or anything like that. Go ahead and put five rounds down range. See what they're cooking at. Eight seventy-seven. Eight ninety. 907, 889, 890. Okay, boys and girls, just for comparison purposes, I have a Glock 19 here with an extended barrel, see all open sight on top, and a ETS fun stick here. Link in the description and discount code if you guys are interested in that. Uh, we're gonna shoot this thing with the same Prime 124 ammo, see what kind of velocity we're getting out of a pistol as compared with the Brown Recluse over there. Having chrono issues today, guys, sorry. I don't know what's going on here. It might be too bright. Anyway, here we go, five rounds. 1061. 1053, 1067, 1045, and I don't count very well, so I don't know how many that was. We'll shoot it, shoot one more just to be sure. 1077. So, as you can see, we are getting below pistol velocity out of the Brown Recluse. So, as compared with the Glock 19, the bullets are going slower out of this thing than they are this thing. Still going under the sound barrier here, but you can definitely tell that we're getting some bleed off from the brown recluse. It's doing what it's supposed to be doing. You what might is? want to get him from the belt up so you don't film his boner. Okay. Be awkward. Awkward. You can hear the bullets whizzing through the air. All right, guys and gals, we are gonna do a really quick weigh-in on this guy. See what we're looking like here. See if I can find a place to hook it in on this guy. Shouldn't be too hard to find. Oh, I don't know, making a liar out of myself. I know what you're thinking. All this, all this rail space, and I can't find a single place to hook this scale on, right? All right, there we go. And we are looking at just under eight pounds. Seven point seven pounds is what I get on my scale with an unloaded magazine. So, at the beginning of the sequence, we shot this gun dry. 
Now, I'm going to make this can wet and see how she sounds. This is just standard drinking water. I prefer to use a water glycol mix, but we don't always have the luxury of having that out here on the range. So I'm gonna wet this thing down and check out the capacity of this gut of this can on here. Took almost my entire bottle of water to fill the capacity of the can. Now, now that we've got it kind of drenched up, we're shaking around a little bit and let this thing drain out because we obviously don't want a gun full of water. When we send a projectile down range, I'm gonna go ahead and shake this thing out and we're gonna shoot her wet. Okay, so I've gone ahead and drained the can out. You're gonna shake it just a little bit and you should hear a little bit of water slosh in there because I mean, you're never gonna get it all out. Uh, you know, baffles, remember, usually run this way. So down towards the, you know, their drainage port would be towards the action. Um, of course, I've not had this one apart, so I don't know but I've got some more hush here. We're gonna see how she sounds. Uh, do forgive me, I'm not gonna send one right over my camera because uh, <laughs> this is gonna probably have a lot of gunk that comes out the end of it. Here you go. And it's still got all over my camera. Oh well. That is ridiculous. Fight! All right guys, so what we're gonna illustrate now is a lot of times out of the front of the barrel, you can get a lot of gas, especially in a suppressed gun, you can get very directed gas. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna get as close as I can to this dirt, dirt pile. This is freshly disturbed dirt, and I'm gonna do it without disturbing anything. All right, guys and gals, we're up here above the range. And, um, you know, as far as this gun is concerned, with the bleed off that is uh, inherent to the gun, I'm not entirely sure how precision this gun is gonna be. It's gonna be very dependent on the ammo that you're shooting out of it. So what we're gonna do today is I've got a, you know, cheapy Chinese uh, red dot on here. What we're gonna do is I've got targets out there at 50, 100, and 150. We're gonna see what the practical accuracy is like on this thing. I'm just gonna take a seat right here, uh, move the camera around, and uh, give you guys a good view of those targets over there. As I mentioned, I think this thing is gonna be very dependent as far as its uh, precision capabilities are concerned on your ammunition. Your ammunition is gonna to have to be really, really consistent because of the bleed off that's going through here. So to that end, I've got uh, this whole stick filled up with prime hexagon. I'm gonna go ahead and start off at 50, work my way out to 150. Here we go. All right, that was pretty easy. We're gonna go ahead and move out to 100. It's probably me. There we go. So, totally me, <laughs> but, um, okay, 150. I feel like this is where we're gonna start to get a little bit of a drop off. I'm gonna hold center plate, and then uh, we'll see if we can correct from there. All right, so that's center plate, and, uh, we're hitting a little bit low. So I'm gonna go ahead and aim at the head here. Yeah.
<laughs> just a little extra fun there. Um, we're gonna go ahead and move back down to the range and uh, see. Probably not gonna show the group sizes because I suck at shooting, but uh, you know, this is what you can do. This is what you can expect to do uh, with this gun out to 150 yards, which I think is a is wholly appropriate for a subsonic nine millimeter carbine. Man, this thing is just such a blast. Um, upgrades. So, things that I would change on this thing. I mean, I see a lot of things that are done properly. I mean, all this is staked back here properly. You know, a lot of the gripes that I typically put out on uh, carbines are, are from manufacturers are pretty much addressed in this thing. Um, there is no forward assist. I have had some issues uh, with the bolt short stroking on me. Um, this gun is obviously gonna get really dirty. Uh, it would be nice to have a forward assist on here. Although I can see they were trying to make this super lightweight. I get that. Uh, I would like to see a sling attachment point at the rear here so that we can run a single double up here. It does have uh, QD spaces all over it and on the back of the Magpul stock here. So there are places if you're into the Q QD thing to place a, a sling. The only thing that I can really think of as far as internal upgrades that I would do to this thing uh, is this thing is super quiet as is. And because it's super quiet, you get that, that spring noise in your ear. So what I would suggest uh, spikes do for this gun is actually dump this standard buffer spring and assembly and uh, include one of these JP silent capture springs here. Uh, what this does is it basically gets rid of that thwong in your ear. Uh, this thing's really simple to install. This is the 9mm variant. We're just going to go ahead and uh, see if I can't hook it in there. So this is actually the 223 556 300 blackout buffer, not the 9mm one. So when this is compressed, this rod comes out. One thing that you have to remember to do when you install it on your 9mm buffer is to punch this pin out and remove the extra weight that they put into your 9mm uh, bulk carrier. So this thing should run just fine now with that in there. Alright everybody, thanks for joining us out here today on the VSO Gun Channel. Checking out the Spikes Tactical Brown Recluse. This was a lot of fun to shoot this video. This is an absolutely awesome carbine and to tell you the truth, Doc what had a bunch of guns that he was getting ready to purchase. He's actually committing a whole bunch of budget to uh, go after one of these things. I might join him because this thing is just a ton of fun to shoot. So that's it. We're going to close this video out right. I got some steel targets out on the range. We're going to do a little bit of walk and shoot. Close this video out right. Without further ado, here we go. Fight! Problem with making your cans wet is it makes your gun really dirty. But since Silencer Shop sent me this gun, I don't have to clean it. They do. So, not my problem. And that's how that happens. <laughs>